Good morning, folks. We're going to look at the sun, weather, geomagnetic induction risk, space energy and biology, and more. Nice little plasma filament here. Let's go over to spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star was very quiet. Coronal hole on the south entering center longitudes. Its solar wind will likely arrive on Tuesday. We don't have much in the way of active regions and nothing in terms of sunspots, but we do have some tiny bright umbral field regions trying to develop at various points around the disk. The solar wind continued its trend downward after the stream peaked two days ago. Conditions are calming geomagnetically as we've run almost an entire line of greens here the last 72 hours. Let's get some shots from southern France and northern Italy. That storm that will move on to Greece today created major flooding in hundreds of homes. People even had to be evacuated. Tragedy to the south of that in Kenya. Heavy rains brought down a hillside and killed dozens of people also cutting off others as roadways became impassable. Let's take a look at solar storm risk at the extreme scale, and it's an erroneous study. They look at the great storm of 1989 and determine it to be a once every 100 years event. We have seen papers estimating this range being from every 20 to every 200 years on that one, and we simply need to recall that in July 2012, there was a bigger burst that missed Earth. In 1921, there was a storm that was arguably stronger in Earth effects than the 1989 one, and the largest solar proton event of the entire last century was in the 50s. The sun is a bit more trigger-happy than these scientists are giving it credit for. Interesting note up next, while searching for water in the Andes, a team discovered naturally produced gravel deeper than ever recorded and deeper than any existing publication had envisioned its possibly being. This not only changes their view of the hydration of the crust as water is important in its natural production, but this illuminates a mystery of great conductivity at depth. All they know is it's related to that bottom of the water table. We're going to do some of that space weather biology here, but let's transition into the interdisciplinary studies with a nice, pretty, aesthetic look at NGC 3749. The galaxy is used as a control when studying other galaxies because it has almost no nuclear activity. It's old, pretty much done making stars as far as they can tell, which makes it the perfect baseline by which to judge the various levels of star formation in active galaxies. Let's look at the ELF created at ground level by reverberation of the magnetic fields of Earth during a solar storm. Evidence here of the negative effect on chromosome break repair, one of the things that helps correct mistakes at the cellular level. Those mistakes happen on a daily, if not hourly, basis. And while this study is hitting on the bees, it mirrors Russian studies done on humans from the 80s and 90s. We've seen similar effects of cosmic rays on the locus ceruleus. This time, it's the solar storm effect and the ELF. We've seen a great deal on space weather, cosmic rays, and human cognitive function. Notch another one on the scoreboard here for the cosmic rays. And speaking of cognition, the brain, conscious thought, excellent piece here if you have access to it, is consciousness really just effects of magnetic fields, captured and confined and running through the neural electrical system. They claim this completely changes some aspects of personality and decision science at the mind level. Last but not least, bunch of idiots at a sporting meet between two of the top universities on earth. None of these future world leaders has any clue that Yale and Harvard stand beside Princeton, NASA, and the UN IPCC itself in changing the climate change narrative. Their lone excuse is that, true enough, the media has been silent and said not one word about this scientific coup. But you have seen the papers here on the channel, seen the data. You know the game is changing at the IPCC level now that they've let in solar particle forcing, and if you don't know, let me share what the news won't. Climate forcing is the movie. While we must stop pollution, our future is cold, and nothing's going to stop that. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. Website members, you got your weekly podcast on the site yesterday. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.